guys now, just to make sure you were paying attention. All right. Which one of these uh, young, good-looking guys up here, excluding myself, of course, is my brother? All right. Well done, guys. That's a test. Um, well, See, I, these cost ten dollars each. <laughs> God, we're here. It's so, so exciting. Um, um, he's actually my younger brother, believe it or not. I know most people think he's older. Actually, most people don't even think we're siblings, but we are. And of course, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ as well. Yes. Um, uh, the reason I point that out is because uh, it was a little hard for me to, a little a tough pill to swallow to have the younger brother tell you uh, that you're wrong, basically. That, uh, uh, so I praise God that it, he decided to work in my heart that way. As of knowing my own pride, I never would have swallowed the pill. I never would have accepted it. But, but again, thanks be to Jesus and thanks be to God, His glorious mercy and infinite wisdom, that He would uh, He would soften my heart in His own time and draw me to Himself. Um, and so, what happened is Mike explained uh, that he had gotten kicked off his Mormon mission with only two. I don't know if you mentioned this, but he only had two weeks left to go, and it was a two-year commitment. And so, uh, from my perspective. Uh, just, you know, first of all, I had served a mission in Denmark. I had, you know, spent two years learning a new language and going on the streets and doing this full, full commitment thing for the LDS Church. I came home with a weird accent, you know, things like that. And so, but I ended up going to Brigham Young University. I was in my third year there and enjoying uh, life uh, at Brigham at at University. Excuse me. And, um, and so I was a little shocked to find out uh, that my younger brother got uh, booted off his mission with only a couple weeks to go. It's such a huge commitment, and, and if you don't know in the Mormon society, Mormon culture, especially in Utah, it's a big deal to, to fulfill that two-year mission. It's almost like a rite of passage into the society. And so when he didn't do it, I had to ask him what was the horrible sin he committed that got him booted off. And he uh, then uh, proceeded to share his faith in Jesus and not, not, not the Mormon Jesus who I, who I thought uh, was the true Jesus, but he, he shared a Jesus that he came to know that was revealed through the New Testament, through the Word of God. And uh, the Mormon uh, church, the LDS faith, uh, claims to believe in the Bible, and I claim to uh, trust and believe in the New Testament. In fact, I had read the New Testament, but obviously my eyes were veiled to the truth at that time. And so... I was a little shocked and I thought, no, surely you wouldn't have been booted off your mission for confessing to Jesus and the, the, the salvation that comes through the Jesus of the New Testament, because that's the Jesus I believe in, right? Uh, well, maybe not. So I had to go back and re-examine what does the New T Testament teach about Jesus, who is Jesus, and what is salvation, how do I gain salvation according to the New Testament? And I praise God that He opened my eyes to that through the reading of the Word of God. But one of the things that I was struggling with... Uh, I had been struggling with throughout my life, but especially at that time, was the assurance of the forgiveness of sins. Everybody wants to know that they're loved by God, that they're forgiven. Uh, and, and that leads also to, to the assurance of salvation, of course. And, and I could never have that because um, I would try through the systems and the mode of religion and the, the rules and, and all the things that were set up in the, uh, the system that I was a part of, um, to to earn that approval of men and thereby feel secure in my forgiveness through them with God. But the problem was um, uh, I, I really related to Romans 10, 1 through 4, and I read it for the first time as a new believer, where it, it speaks of how Paul, Paul is talking about the Jews, how they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, for being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own. They did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. And so um, I realized that at some point that I was, a, I was a part of this system that was kind of trusting in its own righteousness, but not accepting that the only true righteousness that comes through faith in Jesus Christ, which is imputed to those who believe. Um, and so uh, this, this whole idea of me being forgiven, I could never reach that. My conscience was never clean until I understood it was the blood of Jesus. It was the blood of Jesus to clean my conscience and uh, make me holy before God. And I was reading in Hebrews chapter 9 and 10 that the Lord just opened my eyes to that. And it was such a joyous thing. The Word of God 
is sharper than a two-edged sword, and uh, it can be very powerful, and it can hurt at times, but at other times, it can be just a wonderful, joyous relief um, to, to, uh, to be filled and rejuvenated with the truth and the knowledge that uh, Jesus Christ loves me so much that uh, faith in Him alone is, is enough to assure the forgiveness of sins. And so I came to that assurance, and the, the girl I was dating at the time who became my wife, and she was also LDS, and she came to understand and know the gospel of grace as well. And so uh, we were married, and uh, we believed in Jesus, but we were scared still. There was this, this was the last step for us in, in becoming this uh, born-again believer, is that, is that Jesus had changed us on the inside, and of course now the outside is the next step. Now what do we do? We believe in our hearts, and now we need to confess that openly. And that's the natural result of being born again, and it will happen to every believer. Um, and so I was sitting there with this little dilemma, this conundrum, um, in that I believed in Jesus, and I, I didn't know, I no longer accepted this religion as the way to salvation. But at the same time, I still liked all the things, the system I was a part of. I liked the approval I received from men. I liked the organization. Um, I was at Brigham Young University. I had a scholarship for music and for academics. And all those things were contingent upon me being a worthy member of the LDS Church. And so for me to give that up uh, was, was a thing of the flesh that I had to struggle with. And, until I uh, discovered in the Word of God, for example, in John, there were also Jews at the time of Jesus who believed in Jesus that they had the same issue I was having. And that um, they believed in Jesus, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. And I'm sitting here thinking, man, I don't want to lose my scholarship. I don't want to be kicked out of the church. I, I don't want to lose that relationship with my wife's parents because it means everything in the world to be, to be approved by other people at the time. And so um, God had to break me of that and help me understand the only thing that matters is that relationship with Jesus. And so when I read that, and, and uh, it said that they love the glory that comes from men more than the glory that comes from God, I was like, e. <laughs> that's me, man, I don't want to be that. And so, so praise be to God, um, the Word of God um, uh, uh, transformed us, and, and we confess it openly, and it was a joyous thing, it was a wonderful thing to get that burden off and just say, you know, this is the gospel of grace, this is what I believe, let the results fall, let the dominoes fall where they may. And, um, and what that ended up doing for me uh, in my life and my wife's life is it, it was a very hard thing. It was a strain on our relationship with her parents. Um, and ultimately, um, it did lead me out of the, uh, the, the pursuit I had in college uh, at the time. But God had another plan for me. When a door is closed, he, he has one open and ready for me. And I praise God that uh, I have the opportunity now to be part of this ministry, do something uh, far more, you know, wonderful than anything the world could offer, and that is proclaiming Christ crucified. And that is the simple gospel of salvation that was veiled to me for so many years, though I was so religious, I did not know. And the, the gospel is that Jesus um, saves, that he, he died in accordance with the scriptures for our sins, that he, he was buried and that he was raised, raised for our justification, and that we are justified by his blood through faith and that gift of grace. So this next song is called Good News. <coughs> Oh. 
Jesus, who never sinned to become sin and poor for us, so we could become rich by receiving of His grace. We are saved by faith. This is the good news. Uh, 
I, I just got to the end of my rope eventually. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't hold down a job, and I eventually, I, I did graduate high school uh, eventually, and I, I went to college, but I dropped out of college because um, I, just, I just couldn't handle the structure. Um, and I, I just eventually, like I said, got to the end of my rope, and uh, I, I just cried out to God, um, and that He would please do something with me or just leave me alone, basically. I just said, I don't want to have anything to do with you, God, if, if something's not going to change in my life. And it was amazing that it was, um, it was, it was at that moment when I did that, it was three days after that, um, that um, God began a major change in my life, like a, a spring cleaning, I guess you could call it. Um, and uh, he, uh, he led me to uh, a building um, that's in, in the town that we all live and work in. It's called, called uh, the Edgewater Hotel in Winter Garden, Florida. It's actually a bed and breakfast. One thing that's interesting about our band that most of you probably don't know, we, we actually also um, live and work in a bed and breakfast uh, style hotel. Um, and uh, it's one of the things that provides a lot of the funds that we need in order to uh, to make a new album of scriptural music every year, which is um, um, what we've done for the last five years now, um, so far. Um, and but to go back to to my my personal story, um, I ended up at this building, and uh, um, I just got a job there. I had had a couple other jobs, and I just couldn't hold anything down because of uh, the of my addictions, um, and I. I got this job at the barbecue restaurant that was in that, in that, it's in the Edgewater Hotel. And I met a couple of Christians who were baby Christians. Um, and uh, they knew that I had trouble with drugs and alcohol. And uh, they said, you know, well, God can change all this in your life if you'll just let him in and uh, let him do it, um, what he wants to do with you. And you'll, you know, sacrifice yourself and, uh, and begin living what, what he wants for you. And when I heard that, I, I really knew it was true um, because it's 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 what I wanted in, in my in my heart, but I just couldn't do it on my own. And uh, and when I heard that message that that you know God had something better in store for me, um, it just it was what I wanted. And uh, so I gave up drugs and alcohol. I just dropped them, and I I dropped my previous life. And I really believe that that was God's grace, you know, and, and that grace that works in, in our lives when we say Jesus Christ beginning its work in my life um, because I could have never given up drugs and alcohol and it was something that I was just incapable of and uh, so I truly praise God for that. It's, probably, it's the greatest blessing uh, that I have that I'm free from those, from that, from that bondage. And uh, so I, I was looking for this relationship with Jesus Christ um, because I'd always, I read the Bible as a, as a child and uh, I, I had a great love for the story of um, salvation and the story of, of Jesus and uh, um, so I I was looking for this relationship and I, I, I went to a few churches didn't know where to find that relationship and lo and behold a couple more missionaries walked up to me on the sidewalk um, one day and started talking to me and uh, I started taking what they call the Mormon dis uh, discussions um, and uh, I it was just at the exact time that I had given up drugs and alcohol so I was very vulnerable and uh, that happens a lot to a lot of people that they're at a vulnerable time in their life and, uh, and somebody comes and gives them something that they think is their salvation. And I, because the, the church had Jesus Christ in its name so prominently, I thought that this was where I could find my relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I became Mormon. And uh, I just didn't know it. I, I thought I was living a life for God. But in actuality, I was just, um, I was just doing things to work for my own salvation, which... I, I, like Mike said, I had never read, at that point I had really never read Ephesians 2.8, that we are saved by grace alone, um, not by our own works that no one should boast. Um, I just didn't know that, and, uh, but God is so good that uh, through that experience of, of being in Mormonism, I ended up meeting Micah, um, I actually met Steve first, and, uh, and I met Micah and Joseph because they all served their, their Mormon missions um, in Central Florida. And uh, Mike was actually at the point in, in, in his life when he was he was just opening the Bible for the first time and reading it with the eyes of a child, and his eyes were being opened to the grace of Jesus Christ. And I knew there was some, something was changing in his life. Um, and uh, one day I just we sat down and he told me what he was beginning to discover um, that um, or, you know give grace is a free gift and there's nothing that we can do to earn it. And he said, you know, I'm doing this. It's it's so 
completely opposite of what we've been taught in the, in the Mormon faith. That it's really, I, I really think that you know, the Mormon Church is not true. And uh, when when I heard that, I I said, wow, you know, I guess I, I understand that because I'd always wanted, um, I, I'd always wanted that gift of grace through Jesus Christ, and I wanted that personal relationship. And then I knew I didn't have it. Um, and uh, it was just that was the beginning of becoming a true born again Christian. I couldn't become a born again Christian until I opened the Word of God and I was instructed by it. Um, I couldn't know what it says in John 3.16, that God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. I couldn't really understand it until I, I knew that that's the simple message of the Gospel that's taught in the Word of God. And I opened the pages and, and discovered that and accepted it, and, uh, and and I had Jesus in my heart. And uh, it's just such an amazing thing. And it wasn't an easy thing. It's taken me it's taken me years, even after I left Mormonism, to really understand what what all the implications of that that divine uh, gift to us is. But I mean, I know that Jesus is the bread of life that came down from heaven. And uh, when I was in my addictions, I looked all over for satisfaction. I couldn't find satisfaction anywhere. And I, I looked for a long time, and I looked hard. And uh, I mean, I know now it's just so true that uh, the Bible is the only way, you know, it's the only way to Jesus. And Jesus is the only way to eternal life. And that's where the main scripture from this uh, next song comes. And that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. It's a great thing. <laughs> 